Hello and welcome to another video. So in this video, we'll be doing some particularly interesting matrices, which will be used quite a bit in the later parts of the linear algebra series. So I'll be doing a short video on some in matrices that I consider to be particularly important. And then we'll use these ideas to discuss some more interesting and more important properties for certain matrix operations in the later part of the later algebra course. So let's just kind of describe all of these that are kind of what I consider to be particularly important. So let's start with the first one. So the first kind of matrix in question I'll talk about is known as a diagonal matrix. Okay, so as the name implies, this is a matrix in which all the entries are only on the main diagonal and everything else is zero. And I should probably, and this should go without saying that this is an n by n matrix. So I'm going to call this matrix D. And matrix is essentially going to look like the following. It's going to be D1, D2, D3, all the way to Dn. And then all the other entries are going to be 0. So 0, 0, 0, all the way to 0. That's 0. Uh, let me just keep going. And then let's see, this entry right there, that's going to be a zero. That's zero. That's zero. That's zero. And then we just keep going. So this entry zero, this entry zero, and we just keep doing this for until we get to the last entry of the matrix. So this matrix is size n by n. Okay, so basically every non-zero entry will be on the main diagonal. Every other entry will simply just be zero. So that's all there is to it. And the inverse of this matrix, assuming that none of the Ds are zero, so this is important, so assuming that none of the entries on this diagonal is zero, the inverse is given by the following. So luckily for this one, there's a very simple way to find the inverse. It's one over D1, one over D2, one over D3, and so on, all the way to 1 over dn. This entry 0, this entry 0, that entry 0, that 0, that 0, and so on. So for example, this entry 0, this entry 0, this entry 0, this is 0, this is 0, this is 0, and so on. So every single entry in this particular matrix is also similar to a diagonal matrix, but then all three entries on main diagonal are just reciprocal values of the ones in the original matrix. Now, the inverse is, of course, assuming the fact that, okay, let me just go ahead and write this a little bit, little bit carefully. We are assuming that in the case of the inverse matrix, all the di's, where i is the, inde is the particular location of that matrix. So assuming that we are assuming that d1, d2, D3, etc., just for some more clear notation, doesn't equal zero. Because if it, if it equals zero, then of course this would be undefined, and we can't have that happen. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is a triangular matrix. So there's actually two kinds of this uh, tri triangular matrix. One of, them, one of them is known as an upper triangular matrix. like so, and one of them is known as a lower triangular matrix. Okay, so let's talk about what an upper triangular matrix is and the lower triangular matrix is. So it's probably it's probably the best way to, it's probably to demonstrate this best with an example, but I'll just see it. An upper triangular matrix is a matrix in which all the entries above the main diagonal, including the main diagonal, are non-zero, and all three entries below the main diagonal are zero. It's similar to the lower triangular matrix. In the case of a lower triangular matrix, all three entries, including the main diagonal and below the main diagonal, are all non-zero, and all three entries above the lower triangular matrix are all zero. So to kind of demonstrate, the upper triangular matrix looks like the following. It's U11, U12, U13, 
and then we go all the way u 1n u 2 2 u 3 3 all the way to u n n okay let me just actually get rid of these brackets so we have a bit of consistency so u 3 3 all the way to u n n okay so for example this would be u 2 3 this would be u 2 n n 2 n then for here would be u 3 n like so and then all the entries below so right here and so on all the entries below the main diagonal would just be zero so this is known as an upper triangular matrix so let me just copy paste that thing and there we go so this right there is an upper triangular matrix so the lower triangular matrix is the exact same thing but this is going to be down okay so that's not too bad so let's just write down the lower triangular matrix. So it's going to be L11, L21, L31, all the way to LN1. That's going to be 0 here, 0 here, and then we go, go all the way here. That's going to be 0 as well. Here it's going to be L22, 0, 0 l three three that's also going to be zero and then we simply go down to l n n l three two l n two l n three and so on so this right there is going to be a lower triangular matrix okay so once again not too bad so this is going to be particularly important kind of definition later but we'll talk about it when we can okay let's talk about some theorems regarding the matrices so theorem or theorems rather okay so the product of two lower triangular matrix is a lower triangular matrix, and so on. So the pro uh, and the same applies for upper as well. So the product of two lower triangular matrices. is a lower triangular matrix this is and this is no coincidence but i'm not going to discuss the intricacies of this but nevertheless so let's keep going so this is the product of okay so the product of two lower triangular matrices is lower triangular and oops that didn't work and the same kind of applies for upper triangular matrices. So the product of two upper triangular matrices is also upper triangular. So let me just go ahead and copy paste the exact same thing. I didn't change up, change a little bit of wording. Okay, that didn't work. Okay, that's fine. We'll just write it all out again. So the product of two upper triangular matrices is a upper triangular matrix okay so regardless of if you have upper triangular or lower triangular if you multiply them you'll get the same kind of matrix okay so and the last thing is the inverse of an upper triangular matrix versus a lower triangular matrix so regardless of which direction you go you'll get kind of the same thing so let me just go ahead and write that down so the 
inverse of so so the inverse of an upper triangular matrix is an upper triangular matrix. And it's kind of the same thing with a lower triangular matrix. So let me just go ahead and copy that and paste that. So the inverse of an, so there's a bit of a typo there. Okay, so the inverse of a upper triangular matrix, so I don't know why I wrote that there. Okay, and same thing here, the inverse of a lower triangular matrix is a lower triangular matrix. Okay, so that's kind of the uh, main idea behind this. This should totally make sense because you can't invert zero or anything, so, but I'm not gonna get into the intricacies of this thing. Okay, the next one we're gonna talk about is a symmetric matrix. So let's talk about some what a symmetric matrix is. Okay, so let me just go ahead and underline this. Again, this will be used a lot later, but not right away. Okay, so a matrix, so let me just go ahead and specify some detail. So for a given n by m matrix, so it doesn't have to be square in this case, matrix, which I'm going to denote as A, a is said to be symmetric if A equals A transpose. So as a quick kind of example, just to give you a situation, 4, 6, 6, minus seven, that's symmetric, because if you take the transpose of it, you'll get the exact same matrix. So something like A equals. This matrix is also symmetric. So six, negative 10, three, zero. Six, negative 10, three, zero. Zero, one, negative four. Let me just fix that up a little bit. One, 12, eight. Minus four, eight, five. Okay, so once again, this is also symmetric. And something like this is also symmetric, even though there's only one trend, one entry, because you'll get the same matrix regardless. So if you take a transpose of each of these matrices, you'll see that you'll get the same matrix. So these are all symmetric matrices, for example. So here's a theorem, just to kind of demonstrate what it's what I'm talking about. Uh, actually, let me just underline that using uh, the line. Okay, so the first one. If I have, so if A, actually, let me just specify the details. So if A and B are two matrices of the appropriate size, then the following are true. So let me just go ahead and write down each one. So A plus or minus B is symmetric. Okay, so the next one, C times A, where C is a constant, is symmetric. So in this case, C isn't a matrix, C is a real number, just to be very clear about that. Okay, let's talk about the next one. Okay, the next one, A transpose is symmetric, although this is, a, this is, this is really obvious given that that directly falls from the definition. Okay, so the next one, 
for any matrix for many matrix A actually just to be very clear A A transpose and A transpose A are both symmetric okay now the next one if A is invertible okay so let me just actually clarify this a little bit so if a is an invertible symmetric matrix then A inverse is symmetric. This is going to be a little bit important a little bit later, but we're not going to talk about it right, yeah, right away. And the last one, if A is invertible, then a times A transposed and A transposed times A are both invertible. Okay, so there's a lot of properties there, but each of these are important, especially the last two, but we're not going to talk about those right away. We'll talk about them when we get to the concept of orthogonal matrices, but not quite just yet. So these are some particularly interesting kind of um, sp matrices that should be that we should be aware of, but we'll talk about that when we get there. And that is actually, that is actually it for this video. There really was, wasn't too much to talk about here. And the next video, we'll be talking about the concept of oriented volume and determinants, and we'll go from there. So if you have any questions about any of the concepts we talked about or the very simple examples we talked about, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to answer. But otherwise, this really helped you. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll really appreciate it. Thank you all so much and have a great day.